Good morning, everybody. Good morning. I'm here to break protocol. So I want you guys to give the planners of this event a, ro a rosy round of applause. And I want you to give the directors of this school a splendid round of applause. And I want everyone here to give the most important people in this room, the graduates, a round of applause. Okay, so as you've heard, my name is Roger Moore. I get the double seven jokes every single day. Now, when Bishop Anstey and Trinity College asked me to do a, to become feature speaker of this event, I said, "Who me? You sure, man? You know." So it's kind of cool that they thought outside the box to bring a speaker like me, because I'm not conventional. I'm an innovative entrepreneur, and. Funny enough, this country does have a slight habit of stifling innovation. And it's okay. It's perfectly normal for an emerging market like ours. This country is very, very blessed. Very, very blessed. We're an oil producing country in the Caribbean with a very small population. This country is very, very wealthy. And as I always tell people, in all my financial and investment classes, to really benefit from the wealth of this nation, you have to be a business owner and investor, not so much an employee. To really benefit from this wealth, you have to be in your own business. Mm -hmm. It's not just about getting cheap gas and cheap electricity. Mm -hmm. right? Lots of room for new entrants into the market. So we need entrepreneurs. Now, the true definition of entrepreneurship is not so much what they tell in the school system. I'll give you a very, very simple definition of an entrepreneur that produces entrepreneurs for a living. An entrepreneur is a problem solver. We build business to solve problems. And, it, and this country has a lot of problems. <laughs> Oh yeah, lots of problems. It's a gold mine for entrepreneurship. Lots of problems to solve. A lot of people become employees because that's what our school system is designed to produce. That's why most of us in this room are employees. Some of us who develop the gift of gab and able to do speeches and stuff, they end up going to politics. We are producing too many politicians and employees, way too much. We desperately need more problem solvers. We desperately need more entrepreneurs. Now the difference in how I speak about entrepreneurship and everybody else is that we include finance into that education as well as sales. The most important skill in business as an entrepreneur, number one skill by far, is your ability to Sell. You don't know that? Mm -hmm. Your ability to sell. So, for those that are behind this beautiful entrepreneurship program that I heard about at the school, and I saw your project, Nina, that's a really, the Nina project, that's a really good, that's a really good um, endeavor. I want you guys to really seriously consider including rich dad, poor dad into your curriculum. This is an entrepreneurship book. Yes, it's personal finance as well. The tagline for the book is what the rich teach their kids about money that the poor and middle class do not. This is one of the most important books you'll ever read in your entire life. We're in a recession. I'm sorry to say it, adults behind there, your jobs are at risk. Most people are trained in our school system to have one source of income, and that is your salary. It drives us throughout university to pick a degree program that you could pay as the highest salary. That's why you go to school and go to the best schools, 
We get good grades, so we can get a safe and secure job. But the reality of this situation, not just reading these books, talk to people out there. The reality of the situation is because money is not taught in schools, this is not taught in schools, they, their lifestyle catches up to their income. And they become what we are cash with up called just over broke. Funny enough, it stands for J-O-B. So I'm not here to scare you. I'm here to inspire you. Because becoming an entrepreneur is not an easy task. If you learn the right things, it becomes way easier. So your first step is to read Rich Dad Poor Dad. It's found in every bookstore in the country. It's found online. You can get it on Amazon.com. And if you're really handy with the internet, you can find it and download it for free. <laughs> so make no excuses. If you don't like to read, there are other more effective ways to learn, which is actually the main subject of my talk today. There are more effective ways to learn than just reading. No, you have to read. You have to read. But you only remember 10% of what you read. True? Remember the last book you read? Some of you might have to think through the back. How much do you remember of that book? How much of you here remember the subjects you learned in school? And the textbooks? You don't remember much. Right? So, if you want to know more about Rich Dad Poor Dad, you don't have to download the book and read it. You can go on YouTube, type Rich Dad Poor Dad, and watch a video on Rich Dad Poor Dad. Watch a summary on Rich Dad Poor Dad. You, have to, you can do it from the smartphones now, because they all have data, right? <laughs> Times have changed. The world is changing rapidly. It's time for us, Trinidad and Tobago, to stop being left behind. Now, you all realize I have been as blessed with the gift of God. Mm -hmm. Now, over 10 years, politicians have been begging me to join politics because I can talk and I can do speeches and I consistently grant them. You know why? I'll tell you why. Imagine a highway, you're walking along a highway, and three cars are coming down the highway. The first car, passes you at 90 miles an hour. Mm. You hardly even see it. Subaru. That's business. It's cutting edge. It's innovative. Being profit driven makes us innovate a lot more. We stand out from the competition. They like, get that sale. It drives us like nothing ever before. The second car on the road comes up at about 65 miles, 65 miles an hour. That's NGOs. NGOs are slightly innovative. They get the job done. Not as fast as business. But they still get the job done, right? And the third car, all the way down the highway, two busted tires, busted tail light. Engine just... <laughs> That's government. <laughs> government systems are slow and bureaucratic. Don't believe me? Ask anybody who working in a state-owned enterprise or the ministry. I'm sure you have some people here. Ask them for yourself. Ask a teacher who has to deal with the Ministry of Education. It's a slow system. So when I, especially after the budget, I hear people complaining, anybody politician, complaining, 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 because that's what we're good at, right? It's not their fault. We actually, we actually blessed with really good politicians. The ones in power and the ones in opposition. Nobody really stopped to think that. We actually have really good politicians. The system is slow and we can't change it. So we need to stop sending people into politics and stop sending people into employment. Let employment be your first step towards owning your own business. And the next thing that's risky, even if you want to stay being an employee, you need to have more than one source of income. Because what happens when you lose your one source of income? 
Most people go broke within three months. It's a reality that's happening right now. You don't believe me? Go check the newspaper. See how much people are getting laid off. And it's going to get worse. But you know what? We entrepreneurs, we love recessions. Did you all know that? I started two businesses so far during this recession. I'm about to start a third. This is when, we, when you're supposed to start business. This is when you're supposed to invest during a recession. Did you all know that? Yes. Everybody else is running scared. My science education company, we have no competition right now. Everybody cut back. My financial education business, hardly any competition again. Everybody cut back. My real estate brokerage, oh yeah, we're having a ball. Property prices are dropping. People selling dog cheap. Love, I, you probably realize by now by the big smile on my face, I love making money. <laughs> just now I had to walk outside to take a call because we just got another exclusive deal for real estate property in Arima. Yes! I was jumping up and down outside. The kids were like, oh my god, he's crazy. He's a mental illness. <laughs> so, Richard Porter is one of the most important books ever read. And if you don't like Richard Porter, there's another one. Rich Dad, Poor Dad, for teens. <laughs> they have no hiding from this thing. And there are a lot of other books from the Rich Dad company. Now, the reason, besides the fact that this book has changed millions of people's lives worldwide, the writer of this book, Robert Kiyosaki, invented a simulation that teaches the exact same thing. Now, we all know that simulations are effective in education. We see it in the Nina project, that's a form of simulation-based education. I'm sure you all learned a lot from that project. Am I right? It's an effective way to learn. Right? So Robert Kiyosaki's true price to the world was his simulations. Now when his books came out, he became an international sensation. Because the books simplified the story of the rich dad and the poor dad. So Robert Kiyosaki had two dads. This is just to summarize, right? One was rich and one was poor. One had a PhD in education. Smart guy. The other one was a high school dropout. I'm not saying dropout of high school at all, eh? Well, are you graduated? Dropout, thank you. Guess which one was the poor dad? Huh? Yes, you all know why? By the end of this talk, you know why? Because our education system was designed to produce employees. That's what it's designed to do. I'm not saying it's a failure. It's a roaring success. Especially schools like this one that, is, that are pushing a lot of fantastic numbers. That's why you have to give Roger here a round of applause again. Give him a round of applause. I'm really inspired by schools like this. So when I get the opportunity to talk at the graduation ceremony of a school like this, I'm hoping to convert some of you into entrepreneurs. That's my purpose. I do believe that's the reason I'm born, because I'm really good at it. So Rich Dad Poor Dad will change your life drastically. Right, so get a copy for yourself. Now, his simulations, I first discovered while still in university. I was doing my degree in business administration at Roy Tech, aka the University of New Brunswick. And I realized all the rich kids were reading Rich Dad Poor Dad. So I decided to get my own copy. I don't want to work for them, because they were going to be my boss one day, right? I was one of those sitting in front of the class, studying everything, and they were slapped. They were sitting at the back of the class, taking life easy, you know? Their parents are wealthy. I said, that's not fair. So when I realized some of the kids were reading Richard for that, I asked one of them, why are you reading that book? And this girl, her dad runs a huge architectural firm, very successful. She said, oh, my dad making me read it. I said, can I for it a second? And I read the introduction. So here's a tip. Don't buy Richard for that in the bookstore. Take out the copy in the bookstore and read the introduction alone. And then put it back on the shelf. 
and then try your best not to buy it. I bet you you get my kids. It's something you have to read and see for yourself. It would not just change your life, it will change the life of your entire family. Even the direction your family is currently heading. Because when employees die, let's face it, most of them leave behind bills. When business owners die, they leave behind an estate. My grandfather was a business owner. My grandfather died 18 years ago. When I was 18, oh gosh, I don't remember my age. So he died in 1999, and to this day, I still have investments from my grandfather, and I'm his grandson. That's an estate. So when you die as a business owner, not saying you're gonna die, but you leave in an estate, there's just a huge difference, a huge disparity. In other countries, they call it income inequality. Then we basically boast and say we found the solution to income inequality. Because when you use simulations to teach finance, investing, and entrepreneurship, you have a game changer. Every human being is a genius once you use simulations in education. So Cash for Club is my business school. We use a simulation-based approach to teach business investing and finance. I started the science education um, the science education company called Mad Science. It's a franchise from Canada. We brought it here to Trinidad and Tobago because we realized the, the, the extreme degree to which simulations work. And it's working. Mad Science is growing rapidly. We even started a CS training company called the CS Training Academy that uses a simulation-based approach to teach sales. And you know, I just love making money in real estate, so I have to invest in real estate. Right? So with simulations, it's just on a totally different level. So I want to show you all an example of simulations at use. So I told you all this was unconventional. You all know about this? What is this? What exactly is this? A hoverboard. It's very, very dangerous. Have you all seen the videos? Yep. People break their limbs on this thing. Fall down really hard. Now, I bought this a while ago, and I just took up the textbook and read how to ride a hoverboard. You all think I can ride it? No. It's, it's actually very dangerous if I just read the textbook, right? I even went on YouTube and downloaded an audiobook on how to ride a hoverboard. I even listened to some people tell and describe how to ride a hoverboard. And one of the first things they said was, just step on it. You know, I'm a national athlete. I'm not supposed to get injured. Just step on it. I don't think that way, but hey, where I live, I have a very narrow corridor. My arms reach both sides. So what I did was, I stepped on the hoverboard, fell a couple times, you know, and what I did was, I held on to both sides of the wall, I got my balance, and that's how I learned to ride it. That is a form of simulation. So the aerospace industry, for example, if you're learning to be a pilot, what is more effective, reading the textbook, or practicing in a simulation. Vastly superior. Everybody knows this, it's common sense. What you don't know is how effective simulations actually are. The military knows about simulations. When, a, when an army is prepared for war, do they send their soldiers to the classroom to cramp for exams? No. They're on the battlefield, a simulated battlefield, doing something called War games. Have you ever heard that before? We have war games running right now in South Korea. Because crazy Trump wants us to love North Korea. We have war games running in Japan right now. We have war games running in China. We have war games running in Venezuela, for example. This is the most effective way to learn simulations. So, 
So this here, I practice by assimilation. So, <laughs> y'all think I can do this? Yes. All right, the count down from five. Five, four, three, two, two one. one. So the trick about simulations is, it's all about practice. I'm not supposed to go that. It's all about practice. Our brains are actually very dynamic. It's not static like they taught us in the school system. It's very dynamic. Right? The brain is constantly making stop it. The brain is constantly making new connections. Just like in sports, the more you practice, the better you get at it. And then it becomes like normal. Like taking a walk to the park. This is the power of simulation. There's a book called Super Brain, written by Dr. Rudolf Tanzi and Deepak Chopra, that talks about the brain. And the brain can't tell the difference between real and simulated effort. It can't tell the difference. So what we found with cash up people, mostly adults, because we don't train kids, sorry. We train them now because of recession, but we didn't for a while. You know why? Because kids are smart. They apply what they learn very, very quickly. So the last, the last 16 year old train, the 16 year old we trained, he just did two cash sessions. He didn't even do the course. He got permission from his school to do a cake sale. And <laughs> he just kept that sale going. And by the time the school caught up to him, he was already selling juice, cookies, and stationery, making $2,000 a week. And he got suspended. That's when he said, 18 years and over. That was back in 2009. Now we lifted it and we started training teenagers and stuff now. We haven't started going to the schools as yet. You know why? Because schools aren't really designed for that. You have to come here and do your work. Now imagine the future of education where learning is a lot of fun. Where kids can't wait to go to school because it's engaging. At Castro, we have no homework. Imagine that, no homework. Because kids are so, they have so much fun, or people as I should say, not kids. They have so much fun doing it. But you don't have to give them homework. They will do their own homework. Castro is so engaging that we have no exams. Imagine if the school system is more like that. That's the future of education. And the future is now. So, as a, an entrepreneur, I'm here to say that in Trinidad and Tobago, we, our dream has come true. We have found our competitive advantage. The largest cash economy in the Western Hemisphere, guess where it is? This little island nation. In fact, we're one of the top three cash economies in the world, in this little country. And we have been the top three for a while now. The response from Casual has been extreme. But again, we live in a country that does want to maintain the status quo. So one of the first signs of that, despite doing Casual for 12 years and training thousands of people, not a single article in the newspaper about Casual. That's the reality of the situation. We have radio, we have social media, people know of us, but not a single article in a newspaper. And it's okay. We're still training people and still changing the country. It can only change through a simulation based approach. Some, some people are so impressed with what we're doing, they're starting to think bigger. They're starting to think a Caribbean space program. That's how big some people are thinking. Because we have ourselves a competitive advantage. So, graduates, my advice to you, not just the ones who study entrepreneurship, but the ones that might even become employees and part-time entrepreneurs, my advice to you is, the number one skill in business is the ability to sell. So learn and master that first before going into business. Because as a business owner, we have to sell seven days a week. Selling is not just selling for customers trying to make money. 
So then there's the dealing with your banks. Banks, by the way, are your best friend, not your enemy. Deal with the banks. Dealing with your investors. Dealing with your spouse, because you have to work with hours. Dealing with your kids and convincing them to do their homework. Dealing with your parents. Dealing with your friends. Dealing with employees with their annoying problems every day. This is sales. Sales is communication. That's why they are Carnegie courses are the kind of courses you have to do as an entrepreneur on entrepreneur training. Sales courses, reading sales books. You wouldn't really find it in your bookstores, unfortunately. You have to order it online on Amazon.com. One of the best sales books I've ever read was Cold Calling Techniques That Really Work. It teaches you how to do cold calls. Cold calls is when they call companies that have never heard of you before. And you have to use that skill to get that appointment. If you don't know that as an entrepreneur, you are in a lot of trouble. Because sales equals income. If you want to make a lot of money, best to learn to sell. That's the only way. Even going into real estate, you find a property, $5 million. You don't have $5 million in your pocket. A true entrepreneur, a true investor, we raise capital. So in addition to your ability to sell, the second most important skill is your ability to read financial statements and investments. Your financial education. And that's why we say you have to teach finance and sales in an entrepreneurship program. You have to do it. Without those two skills mastered, you don't really stand a chance. That's probably the primary reason why the failure rate is so high. Our school system doesn't teach people true entrepreneurship. Now it's, it's changing. Now they have entrepreneurship in secondary school. That's a huge step forward. But it's still a minor step. Next step will be to introduce Rich Dad Poor Dad into those entrepreneurship courses. Once you do that, then you start getting people to think differently about entrepreneurship. And once that happens, then hopefully you will either seek out my cash flow club to learn entrepreneurship, or hopefully by that time you have more cash flow clubs out there. We have patented our system because we want people to copy it. No one person should have all that power. Cash flow is a very powerful thing. And I guess that's why a lot of newspapers are afraid to put stories on it. Because how would people react when a team of people are basically saying they possibly will eventually find a solution to poverty? Because we do believe cash flow will eventually evolve into becoming the solution to poverty. It's still evolving. That's why we added serious training to it. The only thing we're missing now is something called microfinance. Microfinance is a way for poor people to get loans to start businesses. A lot of people can't function in a classroom. You probably know them. And they label, label them as dunce or delinquent. It's just, they're not dunce or delinquent. They can't function in a classroom. In our world of overstimulation, you could use this to watch videos and play video games and not just make calls. And know Facebook and WhatsApp. It's very hard to just sit down still in a classroom and listen to lecture. You only remember 20% of what you hear. So just hearing me talk, you're only going to remember 20%. That's why seminars are not that effective. When you use a simulation, you remember 90% and more. That's extraordinary. So kids, learn to sell and master sales. One of the best ways to learn to sell, besides doing sales courses, and simulation-based sales courses, best way to learn to sell is getting a part-time or full-time sales job. Even if you have an ordinary job, have a second job in sales. Do it for a couple of years, master it. How do you learn really master sales? When you're making money in sales. Remember, sales equals Sales equals income. income. So I'm sure everybody in this auditorium here wants to make more money. 
people are scared to talk about the subject of money because it's still taboo in our society. I want that to change. With Richard Porter, I want the eventually families to find that, you know, have some comfort in talking about money openly with their kids and their spouse. Because we have a little trend happening worldwide. This is a worldwide trend. What we are witnessing right now is the return of the family business. You all know that? Most successful businesses start off as family businesses. So we're getting a lot of couples doing cash flow together now. A lot of families coming together, the whole family coming to do cash flow now. That's a huge change and we're seeing it firsthand because we've been doing this for 12 years. Families doing cash flow together, that's powerful. And we need more of it. So for us to really truly solve the problems of this country, we don't need more politicians and employees. We need more entrepreneurs and investors. And even if you, do, you become a STEM student, science, technology, engineering, math, and you specialize in science or engineering, we need more scientists and engineers that can think like entrepreneurs and investors. And then you'll be surprised how much we can accomplish as a country. Because our most important resource of this country is not what they tell you. It's not infrastructure. It's not oil and gas. It's the human resource. And politicians don't get points for developing the human resource. It's not something you can see. So we need to work on our most important asset, most important resource, and that's you guys. We want to invest more in you and help you to start more businesses. So that when eventually things happen and we do end up having a Caribbean space program, we have a lot of downstream business opportunities that will arise. Like what happened in Point Research. Point Research was a huge success, but we didn't have a cash flow cut back in those days. So a lot of people who should have started businesses didn't. They remain employees. A lot of talented engineers remain employees. You don't see that in Silicon Valley, where scientists and engineers think like entrepreneurs and investors. You don't see that in Israel. Israel produces more entrepreneurs per capita than any other country in the world. Mostly because of their military training. But we have something better than that. We have a cash flow club and a huge one. And soon we'll have more. So, learn to sell. Get yourselves into a cash flow club. Start one your own if you want. Just go online and buy the game. Bring it to Trinidad. Play it with your friends and family. Get really good at it. Eventually join a cash flow club so other people can help you succeed in business and investing. And what we do at cash flow, once we learn how to invest and we learn about business and learn about real estate, all we simply do is erase the numbers on the financial statements and replace those numbers with our numbers, our salary, our expenses, our assets and our liabilities. And then we play the game in real life. So ladies and gentlemen, graduates, thank you very much for your attention.